you understand the difficulty of booking a trustworthy sitter at the last minute. The reason it's difficult is that individually, each of us only knows one or two sitters, but collectively, we know a lot. What makes tinnitus unique is how we connect parents to sitters. So instead of sifting through a bunch of sitter profiles, or sharing your sitters with everyone on the World Wide Web, or reading reviews that may or may not be real, we allow friends, close friends, to share a trusted resource, their sitters. Think of it, in a way, as a private social network like PATH, except instead of sharing moments and photos, you share sitters that you already know and trust. So in this case, I have a push notification, and I'm going to apologize in advance. Sometimes the reflector is a little bit kludgy. So if you want afterwards, I promise you the demo is real smooth, and I'll, I'll give you a up close and personal on my machine. So I'm going to go ahead into my friends. And in this case, my friend Jill has just invited me to share sitters. I'm going to go ahead and accept Jill's invitation. And when I do, her sitters become part of my network and vice versa. Our design goal with Tinnitus was to show parents just how easy it is, which is why the first thing you see are three big buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a day. Let's say tomorrow. I'm going to pick a time. 6 to 8 p.m. sounds good. And I'm going to select sitters. So there's three tiers of sitters in my network. There are my sitters, my friend's sitters, and sitters that are recommended by my sitters. For each sitter, I see an hourly rate, their age, and how I know them. So in this case, my friend Jill added three sitters to my network, Annie, Esri, and Michelle. I'm going to go ahead and select all and check availability of the sitters. Now I'm going to switch to the sitter view. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So here I see a text message. This is my friend Jill's sitter, Esri, just received the following message. Jill Burnside's friend, Susie Kroll, needs a sitter Wednesday, February 20th at 6 for two hours. Reply yes to accept or 411 for more information. I think the important thing that I want to get across here is that there's no barriers for sitters. There's no app required. It uses simple SMS powered by Twilio, and that's how they confirm their availability and get relevant information. So in this case, Esri's never met me. So she types 411 for more information. In a second, we hope, there we go. It comes back and says that I have one child, 22 months old, and I live in Capitol Hill. Sounds like an easy job, so she says yes. Switching back. All right, I didn't have the app uh, closed, so there would be a push notification that says the sitter is available. So I go ahead into the app. Uh-oh. Let's just give it a second. Yes, I have to take a second. <laughs> yes, I think it's a good job to take a sip of beer. All right. One minute. All right. Well, normally what happens is the text message goes through, but you know, we can't always control these things with a live demo. And I would have a screen that pops up that says, Esri is available. I would then just select book, yes, and confirm that booking. She would then receive a confirmation that has my full address, my phone number, and 24 hours before the event, she would get a reminder. So here's how you guys can help tonight. If you have an iPhone, download our app. And give us a five-star rating, please. <laughs> we also have, powered by Attentive, in-app feedback form. Whoops. So I'd love for you guys to provide some feedback in-app. And you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Finally, <laughs> all right, we're done. Thanks. If you guys have any questions, come talk to me after the presentation. Thank you. My name is Jeremy Luby, and my co-founder, John Washam, and I have created a company called Talk to the Manager. We've been live since March of last year, and uh, we've been just having a lot of fun taking off with this. So the best thing I have to say about being a startup is that nobody can say anything to you if you drink beer on stage during your presentation. So this isn't a planned presentation. I'm just going to give you a quick demo and show you how awesome this thing is that we built. So the first thing I want to let everybody know is make sure you guys know this is not an app. 
right? And everybody never gets that, so remember this. This is not an app. You do not have to download this. This is simply a text messaging service, right? So the idea is that you would go into a restaurant, a hotel, your doctor's office, a property management company, a hotel, a casino, anywhere that has a business uh, facing to a consumer. They would display a phone number for you. We provide them that phone number for only $29 a month. Now you as a customer have the ability to send a text message to that phone number anonymously. That's right, on the other end, the manager that's receiving your text message never actually sees your phone number. And if you guys want to go ahead and try it, and we'll screw around with this and have some fun tonight, you can text me uh, right there at that 425 number. And I'm going to receive this, and so is my business partner here, John. And just so you guys are aware, that is not my phone number, nor is it John's. <laughs> but both of us will be receiving anonymous text messages from you guys. So if you guys send them to us now, I'll actually be able to show them to you <laughs> as we go through this. So you might want to make sure they're appropriate. Last show time, the number. Uh, Keep the number. I let up. people do that. It, it didn't put go. The so number up. Put the number up. Put the number up. Jeremy, the number up. put the number back up. Oh yeah, you need the number back up. All right, there it is. Four two five three two one zero three one four. My business partner likes the number pi, which is where 0314 yeah. <laughs> So, all right. So we sell this to businesses to help them um, really squash any rants from customers that are eventually going to turn into a negative online review. Because today, with Yelp and TripAdvisor and Urban Spoon and all of these um, online review sites that are just growing massively in popularity, these things can really hurt businesses when they get bad reviews. In fact, the difference in one star and that star rating on Yelp, it can be 9% conversion never walking through your door. That's a lot of customers you're spending money to advertise to that are just never even going to come in because a few bad apples decided to share maybe their first experience with your shop. So what we're going to do is go ahead and show you once you text message the manager and they have the ability to respond to you. The first thing you'll get, if you, any of you are texting me now, my, my pocket is going crazy. <laughs> you're going to get an auto response. Now that auto response is customizable by every business. So if you're busy and you don't have time to text your customer back, you know they at least heard something back from you. And you can put in a short URL, maybe send it to, to your frequently asked question page, whatever you think is the most appropriate. Once the manager responds to you, all of these things are kept inside of our online dashboard. Now, look at that spike. The first, yeah, look, so this is uh, all the text messages that have just come in right now. <laughs> so what you're actually looking at here, this is a sentiment analysis. So we actually take every text message that comes through from a customer, and we basically tell you if it was green, whether or not they were positive or negative, how your customer felt by doing some keyword, basic keyword analysis. It's a third-party API that we use. Now, once you have the ability to see this, now this is our test accounts, so there's not a, a ton of texts on here, but you can see the gray on the bottom. Those are actually the management responses. Great way to right off the bat see, are we getting positive or negative messages? Are my managers responding? Now I can go even further and click on this, and now I can see when I clicked on that positive bar, I can see all of the messages here below. And if my, if my system is wrong, I just see, I just see a problem shape. Right, we're going to come back to that Harlem Shake. Help me remember customer one. <laughs> if any of these are incorrect, all I have to do is toggle them back and forth. And the reason I want to do that as a manager is I'm actually teaching the system to get smarter over time. And this is a really great measurable metric, week over week, month over month, uh, to see your positive comments and your negative comments and see how things are trending with your customers. How much time? Five. Seconds? Okay, well, we're just going to run into the coolest part, our coolest new feature. Um, if I can find it, go in here to my messages. I can see all the messages that have come through. Because we found it across all of the different industries that are using our service, over 75% of the text messages are positive. We decided to let our customers be able to share these messages on their social media sites. Jeez, you guys, my phone is All right, so Harlem Shake, number 194. Check this out. I am going to send that right now to my Twitter. Right? And because Twitter only allows 140 characters, but text messages are 160, we're going to turn it into an image. All right. right there. Tweet it. That's going out on my Twitter right now. Woo! We're going to back up if you've ever purchased electronics, consumer electronics online. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Raise your hand now if you've ever purchased. No, okay, sorry. Took me literally there. Raise your hand now if you've ever purchased a mattress online. 
Okay, now, now keep it up if you didn't try the mattress before you bought it. Okay, so not a ton of people, but some people have. So that could have been a lot worse. Um, so I, I think, I, don't, I actually have no idea, but I think one reason behind that might be that the mattress is a very sensory product. And to figure out if you want to buy it or not, and to see if it'll last you three to 10 years or 20 years, you typically need to lie on it. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of similar to what we do with automobiles. So um, we deliver test drives to your house, and I think there are really two sort of main consumer pain points behind what we do. The first is around uh, convenience, and the second is around um, sort of a, a less pressure uh, packed environment, less less invasiveness. So. Um, when we were going through Techstars, we were ready to build a platform about custom ordering automobiles. And it's still a business model that I am very interested in, and I think it's still a direction we might go. Um, it does some really cool things for the dealer in terms of managing their inventory, and it's obviously really cool for the customer as well. Uh, but what we realized is um, if you're selling cars online and you're not controlling the test drive experience, it's kind of like feeding on the, the baby seal pups um, after they get through the channel where all those great white sharks are hanging out, if you've seen that, maybe nobody's seen it. Um, see it, they don't get my analogy. Um, so so we, we became really interested in controlling the test drive, um, sort of for two reasons. The first is, as a consumer, um, especially if you have little kids and you have baby seats and, and strollers, it's not convenient to go to four car dealerships on, on a Sunday when you might have a soccer tournament. So we bring that to the consumer's home. The second is, um, you know, when you need when you need to go experience the car, typically in, in a dealership showroom, uh, there's a real sense of um, pressure that people people feel pressured into having to have a sales conversation when they're not ready to. Maybe they, you know, maybe they have other cars to go see. Maybe they have more to figure out about the price. Maybe they have to go make a hair appointment or something. You just don't know. So um, that's what we do for the customer. For the dealer, um, there's some really neat things we do as well, such as manage what's called CSI. CSI is the Customer Service Index, and a dealership score has a, has a very large bearing on what they're able to order and how they're able to interact with the manufacturer. And it turns out that when, when we deliver the experience to a consumer's home, they really like it, and, and the CSI so far has gone up quite a bit. Um, we also help them manage their turnover with their sales uh, staff. Um, and I can get more of that if you guys have questions about it. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's kind of tread. We also do some cool things for the manufacturer in terms of collecting data. Because it turns out during the test drive, um, there's a lot of data to be collected. Because you know most, most consumers aren't passionate about cars, and they, you would never write a review about a car. But the one time it turns out that you're acutely aware of every little feature, is, is during a test drive. So, um, how many more? One minute. One minute left. So, I'll show you our homepage. Uh, we're not live yet, but we are planning to be live soon. And we are looking for um, drivers. Uh, we, there's Mike, stand up. Mike is very hip, and he's about 6'4". He's also, a, mostly he's a really nice guy, and he is tasked with hiring our concierge. He's, he's worked with Audi for the past six years, um, and uh, he's the guy that's gonna be helping us build our, our, our uh, concierge team here locally. If anybody's interested in learning more about the position, we're looking for people that are also cross-trained in social media um, and community management and some other things when they're not, so when they're not delivering cars, they can do some cool stuff for us on the social and, and sort of real fronts. Um, with that, I will answer any questions that you guys have. And if you don't have any, I won't be offended. Uh, so Buddy is a platform as a service company. We provide two products. One is a ready-to-go scenario-focused API, and the other one are these awesome, amazing analytics that our customers absolutely love. We're located in Kirkland, we're 10 people, we love Cupcake Corral, we love Dick's Deluxe, and we're hiring. So if there's any devs who want a job, come work down by the water in Kirkland. So, two things. 
Um, for this talk, I'm going to try and talk really quick so I can give you a dev demo at the end. This is the buddy universe. All of the planets are the scenarios that we tackle, and all of the little satellites are the features or groups of methods that we deliver. So we think for scenarios, not features. This is the first cool thing that we do. So you will not see a system at Buddy that's upload object, save by array, run rather expression. That stuff doesn't exist. What you're going to see are things like find a friend, search for places around me, create a user, save a photo, watermark a photo. We focus on end-to-end -end scenarios at Buddy. For this talk, I'm going to use a real-world example. So one of our uh, customers is A&E, which is a television network. They have this TV show called Storage Wars, which is kind of like hick antiques roadshow, if you've ever seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, they, built, they built a game. Uh, the game is on Facebook and iPhone. And what they do is they use user accounts, game, metadata, commerce. In the game, you can play. You can make payments, you can serialize the state, you save the game scores, player ranking, I can play my Facebook app, shut it down, take the phone out of my pocket and keep playing from where I left off. I can make payments on Facebook and iOS, and Buddy keeps track of everything. The developers of the app wrote no server code. The only thing they did was build an awesome Facebook client and iOS client. So we're going to use that example for the talk. So we're going to concentrate on a few technologies that we built that we think are cool. The first one is our rewind button. So this is a typical call at Buddy. It's very standard. We didn't invent this. We're just trying to make our version of it. API call, load balancer, web service, database shards. There's caching and all sorts of stuff which isn't in this diagram. So what's normal is that you're going to put some kind of rewind stuff around the database. Whether you're backing up the database and restoring it, whether you're mirroring it and you fail over, whether you have a 30 node cluster, whatever your technology is, this is where people play. So if you get corrupted data, you typically restore it at the database level. If you have a bug in your app that deletes everything, you typically restore it at a database level. And it's almost never per user. It's almost always global or for a time, etc. What we did is we put another one at the API call. So every single API to Buddy can be replayed and rewound. I'll give you an example. The A&E app, they shipped it, it was going great, lots of users, and then they shipped a bug. The bug corrupted a JSON block for their state. And so once users upgraded, their state was all messed up. So they called us to, oh my god, my dev's messed up. Help, help, help. So what we did with a few clicks in our admin console is we said, for every single end user with this version of the app, go find the last successful API and replay it. And then we set it to say, do it every time this bad app is used. So at that point, the customer, who's A&E, doesn't have to worry about bad data. The users can use their app, and they were able to concentrate on shipping a fixed version of the app, not fixing a data block. This is really cool stuff, but what's even more important is some of our customers actually use this for data analytics. So it's, part, it's kind of interesting to say, wait, one minute? Oh, crap, okay, okay. So, that's the, uh, so Buddy's all about the analytics, or API analytics, but fundamentally we're an analytics company. Um, so let's start off with a user. For that user, we're going to add some device information, like an Android version, add a bunch of game state, we're going to throw location in there, and we're going to go commerce, and we're going to add our secret sauce, come on, animation, and then we're going to have a bunch of cool analytics, like are my using them at a coffee shop? Am I using them at a, at a, uh, a hub? Am I using an iPhone or Android? How much people are spending within an hour of me running a TV show ad? And all of these analytics happen for free. The developer and the brand and the agency didn't write a single line of code to make this happen. Then we take all this cool stuff and shove it in these, all these awesome dashboards and provide it as a data service. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> we have far more to 
to talk about them five minutes uh, allows, but um, you might know Zumovi as we have one of the largest networks of Superphone apps, iPhone, Android, iPad, and, uh, Android tablet, and Kindle Fire. The interesting thing about our app portfolio is that, first of all, we spun out of Microsoft Research way back in 2006, just in time for iPhone and app stores and Android to happen. So we really focused our company on building a very robust technical platform to be able to work with major publishers like NBC News and Meet the Press and Today Show and Motor Trend and Popular Science and others to really monetize their content in a robust way on mobile. The interesting twist about what we do with apps is that we don't do any of these apps as sort of agency work for hire model. Every one of these is really a little joint venture together with a major publishing company. And the reason why that's important is because it really lets us be able to think about these on the long term and think about novel ways to monetize these apps, make them great on the long term for our users, and bring in really another level of sponsorship. Not advertising, not crappy ringtone and wallpaper ads, but really capture some of that you know, Super Bowl class brand advertising, which will make better apps and drive more into the app economy. Very exciting. I'm actually not going to spend much time in my five minute shape charge talking about apps, although I'll mention that everything I'm going to say today is uh, the work of the Zumobians in row three. There's a whole uh, a host of them here. It's not my work, it's theirs. And it's a celebration of great creativity and really the, the artist peak hybrid that is Seattle. So what I will talk about though is, a, is sort of trying to think next generation about this spectacularly underwhelming strip at the bottom of your favorite app that is the banner ad that we as Superphone users know how good we are at ignoring. So the, if we hate it, you can imagine how much the top tier brand advertisers hate it. So our approach is really thinking about taking some of the goodness that you would typically do in a campaign specific branded app and infusing a top tier content app with that, really marrying the goodness of a branded app with uh, the goodness of a, of a content app and blurring those lines. We call this approach then brand integration. In fact, this is the touchstone of our second major platform in the market, which is ZDI, all about super high-end brand advertising. Uh, rather than killing you with slides, I'm going to show you two examples of two of the recent brand integrated experiences that we've served into these top tier apps, and we hope that you'll think they're way beyond any branded advertising you've ever seen on mobile. And again, these were all powered by the ZBI platform. Um, so the first step is that when the app is loading, this is an example of a Chevy ad that ran on ZBI inside the official app for Motor Trend. So on the loading screen, we have this very elegant, sort of semi-transparent loading screen experience. And then once you get into the home screen, rather than just serving a, a banner ad, ZBI endeavors to really elegantly and organically integrate a brand bug into the home screen of the app design. So it really feels much more organic to the content. Now this is the part where I will actually uh, risk life and limb for the sake of a novel presentation. And, uh, and so this one, let's say you want to, let's say you're navigating around the content in the app, right? So let's say I want to look at road tests. So I'll drill into road tests and I'll be reading an article. This is all big books. <laughs> so it slides up and covers up there. So this, this unit we call the Pasa Doble, or two-step, pops up for a very scientific 4.3 seconds. And it's designed in such a way that there's this engaging race car image at the bottom of the banner. And, that, and then after 4.3 seconds or a manual dismiss, it hovers back down and it nests just at the bottom. So there's this gravitational pull where the user's like, whoa, whoa, that was a cool image. And they tap on that, and that takes them into this, which is a gorgeous app within an app, powered by HTML5, JavaScript, and JSON. But it also has this native layer. So you can actually do all kinds of technical kung fu you could never do in HTML5. Like, for example, you can do one-touch social follow if you've ever tweeted a video for Motor Trend. You can upload a photo from your photo reel into a, a brand experience. Super cool. And this particular ad had wicked long-form content that was provided by Goodbeat, which is a major creative advertising firm for Chevy. The cool thing with this campaign is that when you tap on the menu, every month or every, uh, every other week, we had really cool fresh content coming out. So Powertrain was how it launched, and then a couple weeks later, the Propulsion chapter showed up, which meant we had Propulsion Pasta Dobles in ZBI preloaded, ready to launch when that campaign went live. A couple weeks later, boom, Driving Dynamics, red color-coded banner. So that is very engaging, different content. Again, much like you feel like an app, but it's served into an existing content app that you already, that you already use, which is, which is super cool. And then the coolest thing about it, see that button at the top that says save your home screen? This, Don't do uh, it. This projection is, this projection is. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do it. Do it. Save it. Don't do it. Don't do it. This screen is not 
not designed for Italians. So, <laughs> So what this, what we call this is, oh, <laughs> I, was, I was six, the button was lower, but I was five. So you tap this, save your home screen. Now I have this sexy icon that is all powered by HTML5, JavaScript, and JSON. So I don't have to go to the app store, don't have to type in my, uh, my app store password. Super, super cool. And it's all the best advantages of an app and all the richness of kind of a really rich advertising campaign. We like to think that we sort of out I added I add in terms of these super brand experiences. Okay, one more example is what we think is the most ambitious mobile ad ever done together with American Express. Super cool. So the first thing is, ZBI powered a whole host of these very elegant and organic, engaging kind of brand experiences that did not require an app update. They were served using ZBI remotely. The next thing is you have this sort of expandable banner that pops up. Let's see a, a photo of your recent video. That's uh, of your recent travel. That sounds interesting. Or over here, um, have a favorite shop or a, uh, or a, you know something you bought recently. Super cool. So now when you drill in, our goal was to have this very sexy panoramic. Experience, uh, <laughs> uh, panoramic experience, which is very, very immersive. And you can see that the way this works is that it says, create a personalized panorama with what you love and learn how to save on some of your favorite things. So that sounds good. Cool. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll create my panorama. And then uh, it says, type in your first name. Okay, I'll do that. Type in your hometown. And then when I say next, this will take me into ask me how I'm most likely to use my card, and I can actually show it. Oh, sorry about that. I can actually show it inside my photo reel, so I can say this is a cool bistro I went to recently. I can pinch and drag and navigate around, and then when I say use this photo, I've created this very sexy panorama that's all about me, my name, my hometown. I can Twitter follow, and the text just changes from follow to following, which no other ad platform can do. This is my photo. This is another stock photo, and I now have a very, very sexy panoramic ad, all powered by the ZBI platform. So it's a very, very exciting new direction for brand advertising, and we like to believe that this will really bring all kinds of exciting new brand advertisers that have never touched mobile into your favorite apps. Thanks for your time.